With this Lightroom video, let me give you an example how cropping can save an otherwise boring image. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video and now let's jump into it. Sometimes you come back from a trip and start wondering what was I thinking when shooting this image. Just like in this case. As you can see right below the histogram, I shot this image at just above 100 mm. However, looking at this image, it feels rather boring. And that is because we don't really have anything to focus on properly. While the subject is nicely centered with those golden peaks right here, the framing is just not good. I should have gotten quite a bit closer to those mountain peaks instead of keeping a wider shot like this. This is a problem I have to deal with a lot personally, since I tend to shoot those mountain landscapes a little too wide most of the times. However, you don't have to throw away your images. What we can do in this case is to crop the image. So with the image opened in Lightroom, you can click on the cropping icon or hit the R key and this will get you in the cropping menu. So what we want to do here is to take away parts from the image to make the subject stand out more. In this case, I want to fill the image more with those mountain peaks that got hit by the sunlight. So I'm going to just take away a part from the sky like this and of course, I still want to keep those mountains centered. So I'm not only going to take away a part from the left, but also from the right. And at this point right here, I don't want to take away too much from the sky. So I'm also going to take away a little bit from the bottom part of the image. And I'm just trying to keep the most important parts of the scene. Now, I still think this area looks interesting, Unfortunately, it doesn't do much for the subject in the center. So I was thinking about keeping it, but I want to crop it out to get a better looking image. So again, just taking away parts of the image until I have nicely filled the frame with those peaks in the center. We do want to have some room around them, so we don't want to make it too tight. By the way, if you're in the cropping mode, if you want to have a different grid overlay, you can simply hit the O key and thus just switch through different grid overlays. This is super helpful for different kinds of images. So I want to keep the standard overlay going on. And with this out of the way, I think this looks good like that. So let's head out of the cropping menu and instantly this looks so much better. Let's compare to before. Now after the cropping, we do have a very clear subject right here in the center with those mountain peaks. There is not much going on outside of this area. We kind of have reduced the distractions around the subject and we basically have built a better image composition. Cropping in this case helps a lot. This is also the reason for me to every now and then go through older images and just try and crop them in different ways to see if there is any potential good image which I have just missed a few years back. Now after showing you the cropping for this scene, I also want to do a little bit of editing on this shot, so feel free to stay. Let's start in the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This does lessen the contrast a bit and what I have in mind for this scene is to create a very warm golden hour scene. I'm not sure if I'm going to add a lot of glow for this scene, but I think less contrast is a good starting point. Now for the golden hour look, obviously I want to play around with the white balance. Right now it's a little bit too cold, so I want to bring up the temperature a notch. I actually want to raise it quite a bit like this. And I do think there is a little bit too much magenta in this image, so I'm going to bring down the tint just very, very slightly like this to neutralize that magenta color cast. Okay, I think that looks much better. Then next up, the exposure looks really, really good. In this case, I still want to bring up the exposure just a little bit. And at the same time, I want to bring down the highlights so we can get back some very nice detail in those bright parts of those mountain peaks. Now at this point, the image starts to lose a little bit of contrast. I want to change that by bringing down the shadows. As I bring down the shadows, I watch the histogram closely because I really don't want to underexpose, but this is looking pretty solid. I'm also going to bring up the whites. 
kind of stretching the histogram for more contrast. And let's also bring down the blacks just a little bit. Wonderful. I'm still not decided on the glowing aspect of this image. I do think I'm going to bring up the texture. Let me bring down the clarity and the dehaze to see how this subtle glow effect will look. It looks quite fine, so let's keep it this way for now. For this image, I also want to bring down the vibrance. I want to keep the colors rather neutral, so I'm working with a little bit less saturation to begin with. Okay. Now I do want to go back to the cropping for a moment because I think we can straighten this image some more by rotating it just a little bit like that. And let's see, that looks better, yes. So with the cropping and the basic adjustments out of the way, we can take a look at the original raw file. And you can see the transformation is huge for this scene. I still think the image is lacking some contrast and I want to give it some more punch. For that reason, I'm going to use a bit of masking to target some areas locally. Um, I think we want to start with the sky. So I'm going to apply a linear gradient coming down like this. And I only want to really target the sky. So I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose select sky. This way, we are just subtracting those mountains in the foreground from the linear gradient in the back. And with this out of the way, I'm going to quite dramatically drop the exposure to make the sky in the back darker. Wonderful. I think we could also bring up the contrast, making it a little more dramatic. Then I'm going to use a radial gradient coming in from the right side. I'm going to make it rather big and I'm going to tilt it slightly to fit the lights direction. And what I want to do with this filter is I want to bring up the whites, introducing some more brightness. And I also want to increase the blacks to add a bit of glow. Again, I'm just using subtle amounts here, so that looks great. Let's start working on the bottom part because this area still lacks contrast. I'm going to use a linear gradient to cover pretty much everything from the bottom area. And now I could bring down the exposure to add contrast. However, I feel like this is a little bit too harsh. So instead of bringing down exposure, I am going to bring down the whites. And we can safely pull them down without risking underexposure. So that's quite nice. Okay, then let's see. I want to use another linear gradient for that part of the sky and just make it a little darker. And then let's create one more linear gradient covering everything except at the very dark bottom right corner of the image. And what I want to do here is I want to bring down the shadows to give the image even more punch and contrast. That looks awesome. Now looking at the histogram, I do think we could increase the whites some more, just very, very carefully to not lose any details. But I think right about here looks great. Okay, so that's it for the masking and the basic adjustments. At this point, we can do a little bit of color grading. So let's head into the color grading panel itself for a little bit of split toning. I'm going to start with the highlights. And with the highlights and the midtones, we can work on this golden hour look some more by introducing a warm hue. So I'm going with somewhere right here in the yellow range for the golden hour look. And I'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit. Perfect. Let's head over into the midtones. Again, I'm going to use a warmer color tone and I'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit. Wonderful. And then we can also head to the shadows, introducing some more color contrast by introducing a cold hue right here for the shadows. And whenever I'm doing this, I'm going, I'm only going to add a very, very low amount of saturation to not make it too obvious but right about here looks good for me. Perfect. We can also head into the calibration tab for some more color grading. Here I'd like to bring down the blue primary hue a bit and let's bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now I'm quite happy with how this image is looking. One more thing I would want to do is to head into the effects tab and apply a little bit of vignetting by bringing down this slider right here. 
And that's pretty much it for this image. The only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's go right in here, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and then introduce more sharpening. Done. So that's it for this image. I hope this little cropping tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have anything to add, feel free to do this in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.